Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Sabbath Show. And today, well, this morning I'm up and about because the Carlton Footy Club, for the first time in a decade, have won their first two games to start the season. And it is so good to see. This is a welcome sight. It's been a long time coming. Um, winners over the Bulldogs by two goals. I would argue that the Dogs should have won it. Um, but ultimately, you look at the scoreboard now, and that is the only score that matters. We are up. We won. We're on top. And obviously, the we're on top thing is a little bit scummy to say, but we are there. Um, and we just need to unpack some things. So if you do enjoy this video, drop a like and subscribe to the show. This is a weekly thing. Um, make sure to put in the comment section what you thought about the game, what you thought about our season so far. It's a very, very promising start. Um, but let's just hop right in. I think the big story from last night is Charlie Kerno and his five-goal haul. Um, that man, obviously, did, well, he didn't exist last week. No goals. I think he had about five touches. Um, he wasn't needed, though, because everyone else picked up the slack, especially the midfielders. But, but yesterday night, he was unbelievable. And not because, you know, he kicked the five goals, but when he kicked those five goals, every single time the Dogs got it down to a two-goal margin, we were a little bit uneasy in the crowd. Charlie Kerno was there to save us. He did it three times where he was able to get that lead back out of three goals and gave us a little bit of cushioning um, that I think was the ultimate difference maker in, in us holding on to this win. And those three goals were, you know, made up for more than half of our total in that second half. So, you know, we still have that characteristic of not being able to play a full four quarters, but it was Charlie Kerno's performance in that second half, which, as I said, was the difference. It was a tale of two halves for the key forwards. Harry Mackay in the first half had four goals and 10 marks. I mean, no one could stop him in that Bulldogs forward line or Carlton forward line. Um... Because, yeah, if you put all your attention to Harry Mackay, Charlie Kerno was on fire. And if you put someone on Charlie Kerno, Harry Mackay was on, fi on fire. I mean, there were some times where Harry would be on Ed Richards. That's how undersized the Bulldogs were going into this game. And you really questioned why they didn't go for someone like Bailey Williams, who was their sub. He's a little bit taller. Um, you know, it would have minute or, you know, it wouldn't have eliminated the risk, but it would have had, you know, I feel like a matchup between Harry Mackay and Bailey Williams, even though it's severely outmatched in the in the favour of Carlton, um, I think it would have helped a little bit more because he's a seasoned defender and he's a bit taller. Um, but that's beside the point. Harry, he, he just plucked absolutely everything out of the air. I mean, we go to the second quarter where all this domination took place and this is ultimately what won the game for us. I have never seen a Carlton Football Club side, while I can't remember, the last time we moved the ball so fluently, played such an attractive brand of football. I mean, last year, handball chains were non-existent. It was stop, start, kick down the line, and that was it. Every single time we got the ball in the second quarter, it was handball across, draw the man, handball across, draw the man, handball across, and it opened the play up significantly. We were very aggressive as well. Um, there were some instances where the ball just landed in our lap and, and we take those. I think there was a Jack Silvani um, tap on the outer side um, that just went straight into our lap and, and, you know, allowed us to run in transition much easier than if we, you know, handballed it all or something. A little bit more structured, but all things were going right in that second quarter. It was... Absolutely bonkers. We we kick seven goals, I think, again. It is the... Well, the last time that happened was last week. And it's a really good thing that I'm saying that because if these seven goal bursts happen more consistently, we're going to be a very dangerous team to come up against. You have the right to be afraid. I think if we look on the flip side, the second half had me absolutely shitting bricks. Um... The Dogs had about seven attempts to cut the lead. I think there were 13 goals, five at one point. And they went on and kicked seven behinds. 
we went from playing some of the most attractive football in quarter two to playing some of the worst football I've ever seen in quarter four. That's even worse than probably the dark days of the Carlton Football Club a few seasons ago. It was that atrocious. We could not get it out of the forward 50 or our back 50 without turning it over or having some dodgy kick involved that would just allow the dogs to send it back in there and put our back line under even more siege than it already was under. Luckily for us, the dogs lacked the class that we had in the second quarter, um, and that's why they didn't win. Um, I want to point out some very key performances. Tim English, I mean, that guy ran rings in the second half against us. And Bailey Dale also was pretty huge. Um, his runoff halfback was missing in the first half. In the second half, it was definitely there. And he kicked a pretty cr pretty critical goal to keep them in touch. Um, Tim English, as I said, 24 touches, 21 hitouts, and 6 clearances. A lot of times he would follow up on his own ruck work. Um, absolute credit to him because he's huge, but, um, I mean, yeah, he probably single-handedly got the dogs back in, in the game and changed the tide, basically. Now, obviously, last week, the midfield dominated, and obviously, we didn't have Chera tonight, but we did have Walsh, and this guy, I mean, he probably didn't have the same game-breaking impact that he would usually have, um, but he had 34 touches, 23 of those were handballs, hence why I say the impact wasn't really there. But if he can rack up 34, then, mate, scary for the comp. If he can do that, just coming back, quite possibly rushed. I did have some reservations about him returning this early, because I was like, well, is it worth it? Well, he did show his worth tonight. Paddy Cripps again. He now has five goals on the season as a midfielder, and he's gone over 30 touches twice. So he is back to his his best, and possibly Brownlow medal type form. Um, George Hill with 32, and he had 27 handballs, which is just a terrible ratio, if you ask me. Um, Matty Kennedy hit the, hit the score sheet again with a goal and 31. Zach Williams was elite, 27 touches. His link-up play... Um, in that second quarter was one of the key factors. It was really that bounce off halfback. Him and Adam Saad were, were exceptional, especially winning some key one-on-ones when we needed them to. Um, if I look at Adam Saad's stats, he had 22 touches and, and 18 kicks. So that's where he's most damaging if he's not fucking around with the ball and he's, and he's you know, gaining a lot of meters. And another play that I really want to hone in on, Sam Doherty, also a quick shout out. Lockie O'Brien. Two behinds, um, 25 touches. It is very good to see that he's getting his output up um, because, you know, when season's gone by, he, has, he hasn't been able to find the footy. But it's great to see that he's finally being utilised. Some of his kicking was exceptional. Long kicking, short kicking, always to advantage. And that's what we basically drafted this guy on, his kicking ability. Um the problem is, sometimes he is an absolute dud. He, two weeks in a row, has tried to milk free kicks to get shots on goal. So he needs to eliminate that from his game because it's basically saying, well, I'm not good enough to win the ball as it is, so I'm going to try and make sure the umpire sees me or sees me having a hard time and will call a free kick in my favour. Um, in saying that, though, his tackle on the near side to lock up, I think it was Taylor Jaray, Unbelievable. You're not seeing that from Lockie O'Brien in a million years if it was last season, the season before, the season before that. I think tackles like that is what's going to keep him in into the... Well, he's going to remain in the best 22 on the back of doing stuff like that. So credit to him. I think he has lifted his game. He still noticeably has a few flaws, but if, if he keeps playing like that and showing you know, grit like he did through that tackle, then I'm all here for him to uh, stay in the best 22. I think the small forwards were really quiet, though. Um, obviously, they're not going to be consistent every single week. Um, always kicked the goal, but that was about it. Durden was quiet as hell. Um, but got every single one of his touches in the second quarter, which would have correlated with that, that forward surge, that forward blitz. Um, the nine goals from the key forwards this week were the difference. Last week, we only got one out of them, and um, this week, obviously, less reliance on the midfield. The key forwards are there for a job, and they accomplished it tonight. I no longer feel ashamed to be a Carlton supporter. I'm wearing the damn kit right now um, in this video. It is quite baffling that we are now saying 
the, the Cullen Football Club have won two in a row. And you, and you look ahead. Hawthorne, Gold Coast, Port Adelaide, North Melbourne. Could easily be 5-1 and one after six rounds. Which, if that happens, we put ourselves in a very good, good position to do more than just make the top eight. But, I, I mean, these two wins were season-defining. I mean, people said going into these games that if we won one of these games, it would be a good sign. If we won both of these games, it's, you know, it's game-changing. Or not game-changing, but it says a lot about how we've developed as a football club growth-wise over the off-season. With this new system, this new coach, this new philosophy, understanding your club's history and, you know, the fan following, we've been absolutely dying for some success with the list we've got and it looks like we're starting to see those shoots that Brendan Bolton talked about about four years ago. The fact that we've also done this on Thursday night footy on a big stage against two very good football clubs or football clubs in past seasons is a big statement around the league and I think a lot of people are now going to realize that this team is not messing around. In saying that, I'm going to be a very rational supporter and tell more irrational supporters not to get carried away and complacent because that is such a Carlton thing to do. The siren hadn't even gone yet and people were celebrating and singing the song. The song. I, I hate that. I absolutely hate that. People being tossers and saying, oh, Cripps is winning the brown though, Carlton are finishing on top, Carlton are winning the flag. Shut up. Two weeks in. Um, but bloody hell, I'm not, I'm not going to deny the fact that we look much better. There is still a few things from last year and seasons gone by that is seeping through just a little bit. Um, as I said, we could have lost this game. We were up by as much as six goals and it would have been a performance very reflective of, or like basically a mirror image of some of our performances last year where we we're in a winning position and, and lost it. So Hopefully that doesn't carry over, but I just urge Carlton supporters to enjoy the win, relish the win, relish the joy, um, because it was absolutely electric at the ground last night and after, you know, singing the song at the train station. It was funny as, but um, in saying that, we've just got to stay composed. After a month, if we're unbeaten, I'm going to then raise my, my expectations for this team. Um, cause you can't settle for less, but that's going to be it from me. As I said, I hope you enjoyed, um, the game and I hope you enjoyed this video. As I said, subscribe to the show and share your comments down below with regards to the game. There was a lot of one pack in this one, but I hope you enjoyed it. So have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.